buddy. Ooh, this is not as scary as I wanted it to be. What? This is not as scary as I wanted this this intro to be. Oh, are we doing the intro? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Oh, hi. So, anyways, yeah. I'm Sarah. And I'm Adam. And this is the Utopia of Nerd News. And like I was saying, I wanted this intro to be spooky and scary, but um, we have pumpkins and stuff. Yay! Pumpkins so, are scary. They can be with scary carved things in them. But we just thought we would do a little theme for our show since Halloween is just around the corner. Um, Thursday, really. Right. That's when it is. And so, welcome to the Spooktacular. Okay, I'll just stop. And we can get started with some games. How about that? Alright, so, uh, first off we have um, one thing here coming from the West, which is publisher 2K um, has stated that Bioshock Infinite's uh, Burial at Sea, Episode 1, will be released November 12th for $15, or if you already have the Season Pass, it'll be free because you have the Season Pass. Um, but, yeah, I suppose fans of the Bioshock series can be excited about that. Um, uh, basically what it is is a story kind of add-on, so it's not just, like, thrown in DLC, it's the first real, like, scripted story stuff, um, where they, they go to Rapture, which is where the first two games took place, and it'll be the day before Rapture gets destroyed. Um, that's all I really know about it, but I know they said in episode two they're planning to where you can play as Elizabeth for the first time, so, I don't know. That's a, Interesting. Yeah, good for Bioshock fans. Yeah. Now, for the rest of gaming news, we have a bunch of stuff from Japan. Oh, A okay. bunch of stuff. A bunch of stuff. Let's get going. <clears throat> the first one is that Tecmo Koi has confirmed that Atelier Aisha and Logi, Alchemists of the Dusk Sky, will come to North America... Uh, uh, exclusively for the PlayStation 3 um, next year, so that's confirmed. Um, now that game, kind of like Tales of Zillia, I guess, is the first one in its franchise where you can choose uh, two main characters, um, and whichever one you choose will slightly, give, I guess, give you their perspective of the story, so it gets some replay value. Yeah, I like that, Like because I'm one of those people that when I play a game, I don't go back and replay it like right away. Um, I wait probably, like, years down the road. Like, it'd be really cool to play um, KOTOR at the Star Wars right now, since I haven't played that in a long time. Yeah, but like like he's saying, like, that would have a lot of replay value in it for me, because I'd be like, oh, well, what happens in the other story? Right. I doubt there'll be too much of a difference, but little but things. So you'd still get their point of view. Yeah. Moving on, um, NIS has announced that Mugen Souls Z will be coming out in North America and in Europe um, exclusively for the PlayStation 3. Um, it does not have a release date yet, but they just confirmed that that's coming to the West. I didn't play the first one, so I suppose I really don't have a, a preference. I don't know. Yep, that's the thing. Moving on, Hyperdimension Neptunia PP. Um, <laughs> I'm not kidding, it's PP, both capitals. Um, will be coming to Europe and North America in 20, uh, 2014 uh, for the PlayStation Vita. So Yes, I just had an image for a moment. Well, th that series kind of suggests stuff, so I'm, I'm pretty sure Hyper Dimension Neptunia PP was on purpose. <laughs> Exceed Games has announced that Ragnarok Odyssey Ace will be coming out early 2014 for the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita. So that one was also announced to be coming up to the West. Basically, this week at games, we didn't get a whole lot outside of just games from Japan being announced for Europe and North America, pretty much. That's I know what that one is. Right, North Odyssey. I actually have one of them for my Vita. The one. The one. The <laughs> one. Um, basically, uh, Ace is... It's, it's like, what they're saying is almost like 1.5. It's mm -hmm. not really a sequel. It's basically the same game, but I think they, like, added more to it. And lastly, uh, Namco Banda has announced that Tales of Symphonia Chronicles will be coming out February 28th in Europe and Australia, but they haven't announced a release date yet for North America, so still waiting. That's kind of weird. I mean, like, usually Australia doesn't get games until, until way, way later, later yeah. which really sucks. 
Um, so that I guess that's kind of weird. I'd imagine it. Well, the reason they normally get things later is because of their government and the way things are. But I wonder if it's because it's an HD remake. They already know the game that's uh, coming out. That could be. So it's a lot less hurdles than normally. Mm -hmm. um, but yep, yeah, still no release date for North America. But t February twenty eighth of next year for Europe and Australia for sure. So that's really it for games. There wasn't a whole lot. In fact, there's not a whole lot in any, I'd say, realm this week. At least of major stuff. Um, save one trailer that came out, but we'll get to that. Um, moving on to movies, though. Um, I'd say this is bigger news, but there's not a whole lot to really talk about. Which is uh, uh, award-winning uh, uh, writer Michael Arndt has left Star Wars Episode Seven. Um, through whatever reasons, um, he left himself, he wasn't fired, um, and he w did never give a reason why, at least as of yet. Hmm. So, uh, Lawrence Kasdan and J.J. Abrams have taken over the script writing. Oh. There's not a whole lot to really say about it, because we don't know anything about it. But it's got J.J. Abrams. I mean, it ha always had, but... Right. He's just more there. He's just co-writing the script. He's just more there. I don't know. That's that's kind of good, but kind of bad. I th I think it's better when he just sticks to directing. Um, he's bombed a lot of things he's written, uh, but hopefully it's all right. Like I said, not a whole lot to really talk about because we didn't know the script. We didn't no. know the story. It's not like they're like, "Hey, Utopia of Nerd News, here's the script. Check it out." Yet. <laughs> we can help you. <laughs> and now the show. It's, it's time to take a turn for the worst. A very oh, dark turn. Why? Um, what turn? What dark road are we Mortal on? Instruments City of Ashes uh, is the sequel to a movie that bombed bad, and they said they won't be doing it. Right. It cost $60 million to make the first one. It made $9 million in opening oh. week. It bombed horribly. The critics destroyed it because it was a bad movie. And they decided, hey, why not do the second one anyway? So the second one was announced, City of Ashes. So that's the thing. Oh, that'd be horrible. That'd be like M. Night doing like Avatar, like the second book. Because the first one was horrible. I know. This is Avatar, Last Airbender fans out there, me too. Horrible. Tom Hardy. You might have heard of him. He, he's, a, he's a bit of an actor. Sure. Uh, he's played... Bane, uh, he played an MMA fighter. He he plays pretty BA people, right? Yes, he does. Well, he's adding another list of BA people, including Mad Max on that list. Oh. He is supposed to play Mad Max, but he's adding another one. He will be playing Elton John. Oh, that's uh... yep. He's playing Elton John in the uh, movie Rocket Man, or the biopic. Rocket Man. Um, that's. That's way different than what he usually way does. Different. Right, because he's normally like the man's man. Guy. But you know, actually, they'll be it'll be really really interesting to see him um, do this because, like you know, because we thought like oh my gosh you know he just does those manly man roles and um, this will be an interesting turn on his yeah like, I'm I'm really career. interested to see it yeah. uh, I think I think it'd be pretty cool. Uh, so does this mean he's gonna sing? Or that's is, what I'm or wondering. Or is he gonna have someone? sing for him. Hopefully it, he can sing and he's doing the singing because if they have somebody else doing it, it's going to look really awkward. Yeah. I like it better when the actors, when they sing. Yeah, I I, I really hate uh, when when singing gets thrown in. Like, I mean, this is a really bad movie without this, but um, the musical Rock of Ages, where oh. they like completely like sung in studio and then they lip synced and then they put it on. It just looks so bad. It looks so much better, say, like with like Les Miserables. Where, like, they actually made the actors sing yeah. when they recorded. So when people would hit them like that, you could hear it in their voices. And it just sounds so much better. Yeah. Um, That's how it should be, really. They should right. sing as they have a recording. but Yeah. So hopefully I mean, he's actually singing and he's doing it live. Right. Um, if not, what's the point? Yeah. It's, it's a movie about music and they're not doing music. So... Next up, uh, the Entourage movie, which has been something toyed with since the TV show ended years back. Um, really, even before it ended, um, uh, HBO had said, no, we're not going to make it. Eventually, they said they were going to make it. Uh, they got all the stuff ready. They were given, I believe it was $30 million to make the movie. 
Uh, Mark Wahlberg's obviously the person putting it together. Mm -hmm. um, getting the actors all ready. One problem. One of the actors, uh, um, Jeremy Piven, uh, was basically given more than the other main characters. So all the other main characters uh, from the show are sitting out and being like, no, we all want the same amount. Uh, so they're stuck on a $30 million budget, which they can't go over. Uh, and they can't get their actors in without paying them more, but they don't have the money to be able to pay them oh, more. Geez. So they're basically stuck in a bit of a standoff right now. Um, and they have to get this movie started filming. It's sometime next year they have to start filming it. Otherwise, it their deal falls through. So, uh... I feel like this is gonna, like, fall on its face. Like, they either, like, need to find more funding, or they're, they're just gonna be like, no. Yeah, yeah. That or the actors will have to give in. It'll, it'll have to be one group, or otherwise nobody gets anything. I just think, though, like, if an actor just really hates that part, like, they're like... You know, that's a thing of the past. That was good then, but I just don't want to redo that. that well, see, this isn't like an uncommon thing for TV show post-movies. Um, I know they had a lot of problems with the original Sex and the City with getting all the actresses back. And I don't know, I, I, I'd imagine it's it's pretty difficult uh, when they, or they're not signed into contracts, but you have to have those characters for the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you have egos to balance, especially when they find out somebody has a backloaded contract where he's going to be paid more than all the other main characters, including that the main main character. That's you know, horrible. It's, it's bad news. Yeah, and people people getting feelings hurt and name calling and oh yeah, calling each other greedy and just whole whole list of bad stuff going on with there right now but moving on in a really weird thing uh james cameron basically came out in an interview uh about the avatar two three and four um he's saying it's not gonna happen oh no it's happening <laughs> oh, okay um stefan lang the villain of the first one that died at the end of it yes he said he will be back for all three of the new ones he didn't say how all he said was this is a sci-fi world and sci-fi things can happen, so Cloning. he could be a clone, he could be a robot, robot. he could be a... An alien. Who knows, but he, he's back. And the, the weird thing is, he used a line saying that he's his character is going to be the Darth Vader to this franchise, which I, I don't... Does that mean he's Sam Worthington's dad? Like, like it's just a weird character to choose, because Vader wasn't the main bad guy. Vader, Vader was a bad guy, but he wasn't the main one. Right, and then, Sith Lord was the... Right, and he turned, so does that mean at the fourth movie he's going to betray? Good. Like, it's it's really weird. Like, it's a weird choice of character to use. Mm -hmm. Whatever. It's the one he wanted to use. Um, next up, Ben Kingsley. Uh, you might remember from this summer being the Mandarin. Yes. Um, has said he's working with Marvel again and some of the other people he worked with on Iron Man 3 for a secret thing. Um, we don't know exactly what this is. It's not confirmation for Iron Man 4 because... Oh, please, no. One, they're really busy. Two, it just wouldn't make sense. Uh, he's a veteran actor. He wouldn't be the one to spill the beans on it. Uh, it's not that. Uh, they don't have Robert Downey even signed for another standalone Iron Man. He's just signed off for Avengers 2 and 3. Spoilers, he's not going to die in 2. Uh... I th I think it's e it's it's probably just like a another short. They've already done like three shorts in the Marvel universe, uh, just to kind of tie his his character up. Uh, I think that's probably just what it is. It's just a fun one to throw on. I hope um, so. Because... Maybe it's like a comic thing. Like they're gonna like not comic like comic book, but like a, a comedic thing. They're gonna throw in in like Captain America or something with a line about him. Maybe he's gonna play a whole different character. I doubt it. You never know. It's secret. Maybe he's going to be the real Mandarin. Anyway, um, so that's the thing. Um, also, I wouldn't expect to see him on the TV show because I, I don't think they would have a lot of secrecy if they were just going to pop him in for a cameo on the TV show. I'd imagine they'd be like, hey, I'm going to pop in on the show. Yeah. So, yeah, anyway, I just imagine it's a short, but that's the thing to, I suppose, keep an eye out on. Um, and my last bit of news, staying with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, um, is we have a strong rumor for uh, Wasp or Janet Van Dyne uh, being Rashida Jones. Um, and she's only a strong rumor 
because even more his the rumor that we had last week about Paul Rudd being Ant Man is getting stronger, and those two have actually worked together um, in in a film I can't think of the name of it where they where they were uh, they had good chemistry and it worked well together. So they were thinking maybe this would work, you know. Mm. But that's the thing. Um, I would be fine with that. I wouldn't have anything against it. And I'd be more down for it if it just means Paul Rudd's going to be Ant-Man. Because the more I've thought about that, the more I've liked it. Because it's such an odd pick. But, yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's that. Um, now all we have left are some trailers. You want to talk about some trailers? That's not all we have left. But, yes. In your news. Yes. Let's talk about some trailers. Well, yeah. We're, we're categories. Yeah. All right, so trailers. We, we've got some trailers. First is the big one that dropped uh, this week. We got Captain America Two: The Winter Soldier. Uh, what were your thoughts on that one? Um, I like Captain America, and I'm excited for it. Not as excited as I am for Thor Two, um, just because Thor's my man. But um, it's interesting. Um, it looks definitely looks good. Um, I mean, I really don't have a whole lot to say about it. Um, personally, uh, Captain America and the Marvel Cinematic Universe is my favorite of all the heroes, and I'm super pumped for this movie. This trailer got me going. Um, I love the fact that it, it, it felt more physical than the other movies in the Marvel Universe. Um, Thor and Iron Man are very CGI driven. On um, this one, they used a lot more physical stunts. You could see it. There were literally people kicking each other and jumping through windows, and it felt a lot more real, a lot, a lot tougher, grittier. I, I, I don't know. I, I like the change of pace because all the Marvel movies are kind of hitting that same thing right now. Uh, I'm kind of, even though I really like the trailer, I'm still kind of nervous about it, just like I am with Thor, if only because Iron Man three looked really, really good and it fell on its face really, really hard. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of worried for both those, though I have a feeling they'll both be better than Iron Man 3 at the very least. Um, but yeah, I think I think it looks really good. Um, I think uh, Anthony Mackie looked really cool when we got to see him as the Falcon. Um, so that's, that's, that's that. Uh, moving on, we had a small bit of uh, Thor 2 that was released. Um, and yeah. it was out of context. It was, was extremely out of context. So awkward. Like, I wish they wouldn't have released it. Me too. They used literally the exact same sound effects that were used in Star Wars. The exact same ones. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. It's just like. Just too, too far out of context. Yeah. And I, I don't. The movie's like in a couple weeks. Just right. Just let me watch the movie. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know. This is the problem. We don't need three trailers. Just give oh, us like two. They, they've released more than that. I know. They have like five of that movie out there. They have way too much of it. I'm, I'm hoping, I, I think this is fairly early on in the movie, just putting little trailers together. Um, obviously something happens, something bad happens um, on Earth and Thor's like, man, we gotta do stuff. Um, he's like, man, we need people. Loki's locked up. We know he goes and talks to Loki. This one basically has them escaping Asgard in a mm -hmm. flying ship. I uh, mean, there, there was funny things in it, but I'll probably laugh at the movie when I'm watching it. So Yeah, so I'd imagine this isn't too far in, but I don't know. It's just weird that they released like a minute of the movie with them flying in a ship. Yeah. With Star Wars sound effects, but whatever. I thought it was like a little short or something. <laughs> I kind of wish it was. But anyway, uh, next up we have Anchorman 2. The legend continues? I think that's what it is. Go. No. No? No. Okay. No, because I didn't even enjoy the first Anchorman, and I'm not a huge Will Ferrell person at all. Like, I don't find... Actually, a lot of comedians I don't find funny. Like, I'm not a huge Jim Carrey fan. I'm, I'm not a heartless person who hates comedy. I love comedy, but I... Nothing for me. Um, I, on the other hand, I love the first Anchorman. I thought it was a fantastic movie. One of the funniest of its time period. Um, I thought the trailer had definitely had some of its own funny moments. Um, uh, without saying what they are, I suppose I'll just let you go watch it. But, all that aside, I still think what I've thought all along, which is, this is basically just a money cash grab, because Will Ferrell's on the decline, and it'll probably not be so great. But, I don't know, I like the trailer. Next up, we have Kellen Lutz as Tarzan. Man, is he getting busy. He's, yeah, he is. He, he's, I didn't even know he's, like, he's like the busiest guy post-Twilight. 
with a little space after Kristen Stewart's little Snow White. That didn't happen. The only person in that movie was was Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, yeah. Tarzan. So, tar- <laughs> yes, I know Tarzan. Um, what is going on in this trailer? Because, okay, well, at first I was like, oh look, it's just like the Disney one, and then it went totally sci-fi, and I was like, what is going on? This is not. But I guess whatever. It's a it's a different spin on Tarzan, I guess. What well, didn't go totally sci fi. They just wanted, I suppose, a more dynamic element than him trying to fit into a new world kind of thing. Um they had basically an extraterrestrial stone land in his jungle. So the government's coming in to take it, uh, so they can power whatever they're gonna power. I don't know, it's weird. Uh, really weird. <laughs> it's like a mix of Avatar and Tarzan. Like, Avatar the Blue People. That's yeah. what it made me think of. And I don't agree with it. Like, if you're gonna do it, just do it like the poaching of the gorillas. Because that totally makes sense. But whatever. Yeah, I don't know. And they had like a weird fight scene where Tarzan was like fighting a gorilla. And I just gotta say, I don't care if it's a cartoon. And I don't care if he's lived in a jungle his whole life. Physically speaking, he cannot fight a gorilla one on one. Well, no. Just but saying, he would get ripped to pieces with no, well, no. Rebellion. That part makes sense because he's probably fighting the alpha male. But anyways, just, just saying, he would get killed. Yes, he would get killed. But this one is hit. a cartoon. One hit. And that doesn't happen in cartoons. All right, moving on. Uh, they wouldn't my cartoons. Uh, <laughs> moving on. Uh, I know we've got a couple movies you're dying to talk about. Oh, I am. Um, the first one is Neighbors, the starring Seth one. Rogen. Yes, the first one's Neighbors, and then the second one is... We'll get to it. No, go for it. The second one is... Uh, that awkward moment. Yes, that awkward moment. So, first, let's talk about Neighbors. Neighbors. Uh, Seth Rogen, I don't mind him as a comedian. Um, he's starting to go on that downward... Viral, I think. Oh, he's been on there yeah. for a while. Green um, Hornet. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that movie. Don't. <laughs> um, Don't. Neighbors. Oh, gosh. Okay, the reason why I said let's do these together is because Zac Efron mm-hmm. is in both of them. Mm-hmm. And he's playing a frat boy pretty much in both of them. Mm-hmm. That's what it feels like. Mm-hmm. That's what it feels like. It's probably not that. But he is a frat boy in this one. Neighbors. And it looks stupid. Like... Stupid comedy. I don't do stupid comedy at all. And then in that awkward moment, he's like roommates with these other guys. And they're like, oh, no, we're not going to have relationships um, because you're single. So we're just gonna, we're going to be single. They're both. They both look dumb. So if you had to choose one you had to watch of the two, which would it be? Mm. That, that's a good one. Do I want to watch the one about how these um, these two people who are married and they have a baby, um, and then this frat comes and moves in like at, at their ha- like across from them or whatever in their neighborhood, and then they like start having war? No, probably that awkward moment is probably the one I would watch more. Uh, I'd agree with you there. I think that one actually has potential for for some level of heart. Um, because she kind of mentioned what it's about, but it, it, it's about basically one of them was basically in a bad relationship, got dumped. So his two friends who are living with him basically agreed, Hey, none of us will have relationships, but then they get relationships because it's a movie and they have to have drama. Yeah. Um, I think there's, there's a potential for more there. Um, I think with the first one with neighbors, the, the Seth Rogen one, I, I just think it's, it's. It's literally Ugh. just like, hey, I've got some idea. Let's just run with it because we're spitting movies out really quickly. Yeah. It's the same group that does all of his movies, and they just got done with, with one, the the World Ends one. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I just think they're just throwing things out, trying to make quick buck before they're completely yeah. gone. Well, and I laughed more at, like, this uh, that awkward moment. I just thought that was a little more comedic. It was a little more funny for me. Um Especially this part where he's, like, in the bar and the, the girl's, like, coming up to him. He's like, are we going to go home because I don't feel like uh, I'm not ready for that. And she's like, I just want my coat. It just it made me laugh a little bit. But um, 
I also want to put out there, what is Zac Efron doing? Is he, like, trying to go back to his, like, party years or whatever? I don't even know how old he is right now. Well, no, he's a doctor. Didn't you see the JFK one? <laughs> like, what is he doing? He's like, yeah, I'm going to be the party boy he's now. He's grabbing every Ooh. role that's offered to him right now. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. Hey, he's even been rumored for Star Wars. I know. I Along with Michael B. Jordan, who's also in that trailer. I didn't mind, you know, Zac Efron when he was, you know, younger and doing High School Musical because I didn't mind High School Musical when I was a teenager. But, now, I don't know. Now, he, I don't know. Okay. I never liked him. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on. Um, that's it for my news. So, we'll go ahead and let Sarah talk for the rest of the time. Yes. So, let's talk some anime news. So we have a very awkward, but if you are a fan of Space Dandy, then you're going to love this because Space Dandy is coming to Adult Swim, um, English dubbed, and it's uh, going to be actually broadcasted simultaneously um, with Japan um, in, in North America. So that's like the first time ever that this has happened in Adult Swim history um, for an anime to be simultaneously broadcasted. And uh, the series will be on Adult Swim um, in January 2014. And um, that's a thing. Uh, there is a trailer. It's very awkward. There's no talking in it. It's all music, but it's definitely, you can tell it's definitely an Adult Swim thing. Because I do not enjoy Adult Swim at all. Yeah. I don't know. When I was watching it, first thing I was thinking of was, Man, this main character looks like a ripoff of Lupin the Third. Um, he really looks a lot like him. Um, the second thing was, uh, I was curious if I was actually watching a trailer or a music video. Because yeah. it, it feels almost more like a music video. And at one point, they literally just say boobs, and they just start throwing them in your face. Yep, they're like, so it is a music video. It really is. Uh, but feel free to watch that if you want. I, I don't even really like that art style. No, personally. I'm not a huge fan of that art style either because it reminds me of Adult Swim. I'm just not an Adult Swim person. But. It used to be good. Back in the, back <laughs> back, in the glory days. Back in the day. I don't know. They've always had some pretty questionable stuff. They've had Aqua Teen Hunger oh, Force on gosh, for a long don't time. Oh, gosh. Don't even start yeah, it. That's, oh. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> but let's move on from that. So I'm sorry if you're a Space Dandy fan and I'm, or you an know. an Aqua Teen Hunger Force fan. But that's... You know. We're just trying to alienate people. That's cool for you. It's not my, it's not our thing. But anyways. So, um, I know we talked about this anime um, a little while back. It's called Jormungand. Um, we did talk about it. That they were going to get a release. Um, but actually it's been pushed back. And uh, there isn't a reason why. But the anime um, DVD Blu-ray disc um, box series has been delayed by two months, um, Robert's Anime Corner Store is listing the anime to release February 18th, and the original release date was December 17th. So if you are a Jormungand fan, um, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to wait two months, two more months from December um, before you can buy that Blu-ray and DVD box set. So wait for February. Yes. Moving on to some very interesting news, NISA America, obviously, um, they licensed the eccentric family for retail release. It is a comedy drama and it's um, obviously, um, well not obviously, but it makes sense that Crunchyroll and Hulu are streaming, have, have both been streaming them online. Um, because it's an NISA thing, they usually do a lot of subbed animes, um, I'm not quite sure if they even do dubbed but they do a lot of subbed. Um, so that is a thing, and that's cool. Next on the list, which is really cool, I know we've talked about it, um, the live action Kiki's Delivery Service. They finally um, had a teaser video that was streaming, and the video re reveals that the film will be um, op will open on March 1st, 2014, and they began filming actually back in May, uh, May 23rd, and wrapped up and they've been filming in Tokyo, and they wrapped up in July. So, live action Kiki's Delivery Service with Japanese actors, but that's way cool, because that's just way so cool. So what were your thoughts on Kiki? Because they did show a picture of the actress playing her. Um, 
I don't really know. Like, like oh, there's a there's a teaser video, but I don't read Japanese, so I don't know what's going on. In but it. if you're a fan of sky, scenery shots of the sky and, and forest ocean. and then you'll love it. Right, because that's pretty much it. If but, you don't know Japanese symbols. But it does show, yeah, like like Adam was saying, it does show a picture of the girl who's playing Kiki. And I can see it. I can see her playing She's got it. ruffled hair. Yeah, and I can see it. I just want to know what they're going to do with the cat, Gigi. That'll CGI? Aw, oh, that'd be horrible. Oh, yeah. It's going to look like Wizard of Oz. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, Kiki delivery fins. Tell us myself. Yay! That's so exciting. And moving on, we have the 18th, 18th animation Kobe Awards for this year was announced just past Friday. The awards are among the most prestigious industry accolades in Japanese animation and media. Um, the awards ceremony will be held on December 8th in the city of Kobe, Western Japan. So, um, what we're going to talk about is who got these awards. Oh, did they announce the winners or just nominees? Uh, the, the winners. Oh, well. <laughs> At least they that's... don't do award shows like we do, okay? <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what it is to my knowledge. I mean, they only had one person in the category, so I, I took it as, hey, they, they got it. Maybe each of those one people were nominated and they don't know who they're up against. Oh, Maybe they're knows? only going to release like one nominee like every week. That would be great for our show. I'm pretty sure they won it, though. Okay. That, would, that would be good for our show. But anyways, <laughs> we're going to pretend like these are the winners, because they probably are. But who knows? But we're going to do this anyway. So, for individual award, Sue Sutoma, um, Mizu Shima, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing these wrong, um, he won for the individual award, and he's a director. And then there was a special awards. Um, so Soji Kawamori, Kawamori um, which is an anime director, he's a mecha designer, he's a vision creator, um, he won that. And there was also a Precure franchise production team that got the special award. For our TV award, Attack on Titan won that one. Theatrical film was Garden of Words. Theme song got, um, the theme song award went to... Gurren no Yumiya by Linked Horizon, which I'm not quite sure what that theme song is from, um, but they won. And then the Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Hayao Miyazaki. Lifetime Achievement Awards are like the biggest joke ever. Why? Because they're just like, hey, you're retired. Take it. Yeah, but he's done a lot in his life. Well, I'm not attacking him. I, I know. know I know you're a Miyazaki fan. I girl, am a complete Miyazaki But I'm just saying, in general, the whole the whole concept of it is, is basically like, hey, you're done doing stuff. Here you go. Oh, I don't think that, but... Whatever. So, yes, those are... That's the anime news, and those are pretty sure the winners of those awards. Who knows? Who knows? I'm going to go with that. Those are the winners of the awards. And to move on to some book news, really, we're just going to go to the Game of Thrones world because that's where it's going on this Tuesday. That's, that's just where the like the mecca at. of the book world anyway. Yeah. So if you are a Game of Thrones fan, which pretty much everyone should be unless right. you are a child. Right. Right. The fifth book... Um, a Dance with Dragons is going to be coming out again. Obviously, it's already out, but they're doing a mass production, which makes the book a little cheaper. Um, so that's coming out top October 29th, and it's paperback. Soon. Yep, it's this Tuesday. And also, um, if you don't have all the books and you're like, man, I really want to buy those books, but they've been so expensive. Well, this is your opportunity because they're having a mass production of all five book set so you can get your hands on that and that comes out october 29th as well i just think it's funny because they they've had the, the way books work in general when they have series every time a new one comes out now you can get all three now you can get all four all in box sets mm -hmm. with really big price tags yeah <laughs> I just, it's just the way they sell books but i suppose that's what they have to do in the world of kindle and tv yeah 
so that's the thing. But the best news, and we've talked about it before, um, is that there is a book called The Wit and Wisdom of Tyrion Lannister that is coming out October 29th as well. So if you are a Tyrion Lannister fan, which I like him, he's pretty cool, you can kind of get into his head. He's got no nose in the book. Ah, right, yeah. yeah. You can kind of get in his head and um, kind of see where that's, that wit and wisdom is coming from. So, that is a thing. Um, amazing books. If you haven't read them, check them out. Uh, they're very long reads, but they're great. And you have, if you haven't watched the TV series, check it out. Yes, I am a fangirl for, for Game of Thrones because I believe it is a great show. We both do. Right, we're both fangirls. Yep, he's a fangirl too. Yeah. So yes, that is it for my anime and my book news. That's that's what's going on. All right, so that's it for our show. Yes. Um, I don't think we have any videos over the course of the week, so uh, we will see you guys next time in a slightly less Halloween episode. Yes. Have a spooktacular Halloween. Ah. See you guys later.